I am the might before the sword, the tremors in the spear shaft. I craft my ways from blazes of firestorms, absorb the failings of deadened ends to render the floors I dance upon. I am the spaces between applause, the roars of hearts running through heaven's halls. I breathe the forms of light and silence, stall the course of cosmic riots. I am the glory of the giants Manaslu, Sagomatha, watchmen of the Asian plains. They yield my name, made famous through the cries of albatross flocks, inflamed in Pacific fires. I am dressed in the spray of Nevada dunes, clothed in the shadows of Sahara caves. I am the light of lunar flames, fleshing the rains of Amazonia. I paint the trains of Antarctic quests, release dominion to desert Panthera. I authorize the remains of Aztec and Inca that bloom through the visions of mountain tribes. I ride the skylines, breathe the signs, ignite the paths of astronomy's eyes. I am the unheard, heard in the storms that burn on my words. I am the yearned for, I am the word. I emerge deciduous from the wetlands of your cries, rise through the moments you wake. I bring the dawns that shake the fevers from your remembrance. I am here, I am imminent. I am he who crosses the plains through which you strayed. Discover the parts extinction seared. I dust away the dried remains of tears. Drain the lakes of your regrets. I wet the wells, till the soil, forsake the toil, quell the rages, sow the broken pages with my belief in you. I bring the you you have never quite met. I am the desire that keeps your pillow wet. I am the heartbeat you seek when you chase after dreams. In the reachings and sighs you are looking for me. In the body touching body it is me you seek. In the groans and the longings it is me you seek. In the yearning dream, in the need to be seen. In the love me, love me it is me you seek. In the breath drop wonders, gasping hunger. In the touch of a stranger that makes you feel younger in the books and the fables in the this is me labels in the is this me is this me in the hear me hear me say my name in the touch me find me need me find me in the aching pain in the love the music the beats the taste in the heat and the need and the need for embrace in the color the gaze the meaning the desire in the flame of the voice and the spirit of the fire when you cry for more my name you weep i am he who waits for you to reach i reach for you and wait when you lie half broken and awake i am the watchman of your sleep i wait and wait till the shakings cease i am the truth they call release when the darkness flares and starts to speak, I sculpt the shades of daybreak. It is me you see. Well, good morning, friends. Welcome to our St. John's 10 a.m. service. I hope you're well. I hope you're uh, flourishing as much as you can in these difficult times. I want you to know that I'm praying for you I'm asking us all to hold on nerve and stay united together. And uh, this, as most things in life, will pass, but we're praying that it pass over us, uh, us and passes over the village and that we won't be impacted or affected. As wacky as that sounds, why don't we just pray that? And that's what we're praying. And we're praying also for a vaccine to come for this virus. So welcome to our service. It's great to see you. We're going to start with our collet for the day, which is our prayer for the day for the church. And you'll see that coming up now. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, has delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. We now come to our first hymn of praise. Let's join in together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Let's say the words of the confession together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And if we've said that with an open heart to God, May we know that the God of love and power forgives you and frees you from your sins. May he heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. 
And as we say that, let's continue by saying the words of the creed together as a church. We say together, we believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. And we believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Save Amen. God to carry me through. My God is He's able. He's able. I know my God is able. I know my God is able to carry me through. For He has healed the broken hearted. He has set the captives free. You know He healed the sick and he raised the dead and He walked upon the sea. My God is He's able. able. He's able. able. I know my God is able. I know my God is able to carry me through. My God is able. He's able. I know my God is able. I know my God is able to carry me through. My God is able. He's able. I know my God is able. I know my God is able to carry you through. For he has healed the broken hearted. He has set the captives free. You know he healed the sick. And he raised the dead. And he walked upon the sea. My God is He's able. able. He's able. able. I know my God is able. I know my God is able to carry me through. <laughs> One more time. Sing. Well, welcome back. And we now come to our reading, which is given to us today by Chris Milam. The reading is from the first letter of John, chapter 3, from reading from verse 19 to verse 24. This is how we know that we belong to the truth, and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. This is the end of the reading. Well, friends, it's good to see you. And uh, I just want to uh, share a few thoughts about our reading today. I, I love the fact that uh, John is constantly encouraging people to absolutely and utterly abandon themselves on God. I don't know where you are. You know, I've had ups, I've had lows, you know, I've been worried about my friends. I have a friend at the moment called Mark and he's fighting for his life and I've known him for years. He's a very fit guy. And I've just been praying for him over the phone, sending him clips and fully aware that that could be me at any time. You know, um, 1 John, one thing that stands out from 1 John chapter 3, 19 for me is, if you want something from God, ask. If you want something from God, ask. But God generally only gives it you if you are right with him. Now, 
we all know that we've had prayers answered and, and not answered, but I'm not going to go down the theology of that and talk too much about that. I'm just sort of looking at what John's saying here. He says in verse 21, Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And then he goes on in verse 22, And we receive from him anything we ask. Because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. So there's this thought that God gives us things which are in line with his purposes and plans. So to understand what they are, you read the scriptures and you understand more about who God is. But I'm really encouraged that if we want something as the church, we can ask God. We're encouraged, says John, to ask God. And it says not only can we ask him, but we have confidence to ask him we can have confidence dear friends if our hearts do not condemn us meaning if we know that we're not living a wrong life but if we're right with God we can have confidence before him and then we receive from him anything we ask I think that's amazing he says because we keep his commands and do what pleases him so the question is are you right with God is your heart right with God is your life right with God and the second thing here is, do you do what pleases him? Do you obey him? Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart? Do you love your neighbor as yourself? Do you love Jesus? Do you, do you have a compassion for him? Do you want to serve him? Do you want to please him? And uh, I love verse 23, and it says, and this is his command. This is God's command to us. You see, we keep God's commands to do what pleases him then God says I'm commanding you to believe in the name of my son Jesus Christ I'm commanding you to believe in him I'm commanding you he's commanding me he's commanding the world to believe in Jesus and then he says and to love one another as he commanded us and he goes on, and the one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And I'll explain that in a second. So, do you believe in the, name Je in the name of Jesus? Do you utterly believe in the name of Jesus? Because if there's ever been a time in my lifetime that we utterly need to believe in the name and promises of Jesus Christ, it's now. It's now. This is the time that we need to believe in Jesus. And you know... Um, I was going through my boxes. Uh, I went to get this this music stand from my from my little room at the back there, and I noticed that I had some old bills. I, they are fake uh, one million pound notes that I used to use. You get them; they're comic ones for kids and stuff. And I used to say to people when I was doing talks and travelling, I'd say, "What's the million dollar question?" And I'd show, uh, or sorry, "What's the million pound question?" And I pull this million pound note out. I say the million pound question for me is if God exists, have I met him? Or the million pound question for others is does God exist? Or the million pound question for others is if God exists, does he love me? Or the million pound question is if God exists, does he want a relationship with me? And I think the most brilliant question that we can answer is God does exist, he does want a relationship with us, he does love us so much that he allowed himself to come in the form of a human being to tell us about himself and then to take all the wrongdoing on himself who was innocent so that we would then be presented clean before God. So when we become Christians, let's remind ourselves, we give all our wrongdoing to Jesus, anything we've done to God, others, ourselves, that passes on to him and then we come before God and he sees us clean. And this is the gift. But you have to believe in Jesus and you have to follow him. But also there's a command to love one another. And I've never seen a greater command in my lifetime and a more important command at this time. You could say in the, the wars behind us, yes, in the Second World War and the First World War, but that was for that generation, but in our generation, this command to love your neighbour, to love God, love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, everything, is, is so important. And to love your neighbour. And I'm seeing it in our community. It's, oh, it's such a joy. I'm seeing people loving their neighbour. But when you love your neighbour because of God, it's another level where God goes, 
for obeying me, I want to bless you. I want to bless you. So if you want something from God, be right with him and he'll hear your prayer, says John. We have confidence if our hearts don't condemn us. And then he goes on to say, verse 23, but God commands us to believe in the name of Jesus and to love one another. And the final thing here, which is so exciting for me, is he goes on to say this. The one, 24, verse 24, the one who keeps God's commands lives in him. So we, if you keep God's command, you live in God. And he lives in us. So there's an exchange. We live in God and God lives in us. How does he do that? Well, he says this is how we know that he lives in us. Because we have the spirit he gave us. So if any of us don't know, we have an 100% assurance. And let me tell you, as the vicar, people have been coming up to me and saying to me, I'm not sure if I'm saved. I don't know what I believe. And guys, we need to know what we believe. We need to know it at this time. We need to know it. We need to know where we're going to in the future when we leave this world. And I pray for all of us, it's not now. My prayer for all of us, this virus won't be the initiator for that, that it will pass over me and you and we'll catch this vaccine when it comes out. But it says, this is how we know he lives in us because the spirit he gives us. You see, when you follow Jesus, when you believe in him and you please the Father, he gives you this gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is so important because at this time he stops you fretting. He stops you worrying. He inspires you. He gives you a shalom, a peace you wouldn't normally or necessarily have. But when God fills you, he gives you an incredible sense of peace. And Romans 8, 9 says, You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. So the question is, do we have the Spirit of Christ? Because we need it. Because when we have the Spirit of Christ, we live in him and he lives in us. And then there's this amazing supernatural sense of peace, despite our circumstances. So if you're worrying now, ask God, Lord, fill me up with you. Fill me up with you, Jesus. Fill me up with your presence. Fill me up and let me devote myself utterly to you. Let me be the only one uh, that, uh, or sorry, let me be utterly devoted to you. Let me be the only one in my life at the moment that is not distracted by you. Because people are distracted by so many things. But I want to be utterly focused on God. So I'm not distracted by the news. I'm not distracted by my circumstances. I'm focused on him and his promises. And you know, the Holy Spirit who comes, this is the promise. How do we know God lives in us? How do we know that he lives in us? We know by the spirit he gives us. And the spirit, it says in many places, is many things. But one of them he is. He's a helper. He's a comforter. He's an advocate. John 14 26 says but the helper the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name says Jesus he he will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance of all things I've said to you so it's the Holy Spirit that teaches us how to live in these circumstances and how to operate that's the King James Version in John in the in the Passion Translation John 14 26 it says But when the Father sends the spirit of holiness, the one like me who sets you free, he will teach you all things in my name and he will inspire you to remember every word I've told you. And then there's the King James, uh, the the King James older version. The first one, I apologize, was the new King James version. But the original King James version says this. But the comforter, so the new King James says the helper But the original Old English King James says, but the comforter, it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I've said unto you. And finally, I love the message version. Why read different versions? Because it gives you an understanding of what's trying to be said. In the message version, it says this. I'm telling you these things while I'm still living with you. The friend, 
the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. See, the Spirit will tell us what's going on in this season, what we need to be aware of. It says here, he will remind you of all the things I've told you, and I'm leaving you, says Jesus, well and whole. That's my parting gift to you. Peace, I don't leave you the way you're used to being left. The peace I give you is different from the peace of the world. You see, I'm not leaving you, he says, to feel abandoned or bereft. I leave my peace with you. And that is, in a sense, the opposite. So you won't be upset or distraught, he goes on to say. Many different versions of this. The NIV, New International Version, says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit. So we have the helper, the spirit of holiness, the comforter, the friend, the advocate. An advocate speaks on our behalf to the Father. The friend is someone who comes alongside us. The comforter holds us and carries us. The spirit of holiness lives and indwells and inspires us. And the helper, he gives us guidance every day. And the original word, I was looking it up, parakletos. It's really also defined in Greek, the Greek, because he's trying to understand what is the deeper meaning. It's someone who's called to one's aid. He's an aid in life, a support, a carrier. And my prayer for you is that he would be your aid. He would carry you and hold you. Do you know, 1 Corinthians 13 says this. Do you know you're the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells within you? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, that you have from God? You're not on your own. Isn't that great? No matter how we feel at this time, we're not on our own. 2 Corinthians 6, 16. And what agreement has the temple of God do with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. You see, we are the church. We can't go in the building, but we are the living building of the, of, of the temple. God said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. God is living in us, walking among, among us. And I will be their God and they will be my people. And Ezekiel 36, 27 says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you'll be careful to observe my ordinances. You see, it's really hard utterly living a life following God's ways without the Holy Spirit. But he constantly prompts you how to live. And encourages you and spares you on. And then it says in 2 Timothy 1.14. Guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us the treasure which has been entrusted to you. Guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us the treasure which has been entrusted to you. You see the treasure we have is this gift of God living within us himself. Jesus on earth, God in heaven. And the Holy Spirit alive today, living within the human soul, the human heart. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And what does it inspire you to do? Acts 6, 5, we have this man, Stephen, one of the first martyrs of the faith. It says, the statement found approval with the whole congregation. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit. And, you know, God chooses us and he fills you with the Spirit. But then he went on to die but even as he was dying he was so full of the spirit that he was forgiving people he wasn't scared of death so to finish my prayer for you is that you will be filled with the spirit to inspire to be comforted to have him as a helper at this time to have him as your friend and to be your advocate and your guide he loves you the father loves you do not give in to fear the Lord loves you and he wants to give you the desires of your heart. He doesn't want you to suffer. He doesn't want you to fear. May I pray? I'd love to pray for you. Let's close our eyes. Father, I pray for all those here. Would you have mercy on us? Would you fill us up with your Holy Spirit? Help us not be caught up in ourselves. Help us live lives which please you. You said here we can ask for something from you if we belong to you. I ask, Lord, I ask that you would protect my church here that I lead, every member of my church. I ask and I, I advocate for them, I intercess for them, every member of my church, protect them. And I ask for every member of this parish, the parish that I lead as the Anglican vicar, 
I know other people here, but I pray for every soul, all 5,000 of them, that you will protect them, that this horrible thing, this virus will pass over our village. And Lord, for anyone that gets it, they will just, it'll be like a bad cold. And Lord, I know that everybody, I pray for everybody who hears this, that they would know God lives in them. That they would ask you, come Lord, please, God, God, would you live in me? Would you live in me? I don't want to live by myself. I'm scared. God, would you live in me? Would you inspire me? May I know that you're with me in this valley that I'm in? And let's keep our perspective, Father. Help us see that you're in, you're in control of everything. The kingdom of God rules and reigns in this world. We will not give in to fear. And I pray wherever you are now, come Holy Spirit. Come Jesus. Allow Jesus to enter your home. Allow him to enter your heart. He wants to comfort you. And maybe you're not sure. Just say, Jesus, please forgive me if I've done wrong. Please fill me with your love. Fill me with your hope. Fill me with your assurance. Fill me with your peace. I love you, Lord. I'm sorry if I haven't accepted you fully. I want to follow you, but you are the only assurance in an uncertain world. In an uncertain world, Lord, you are the only insurance, the only assurance, and the only guarantee of hope in all circumstances. And I love it, Lord, that the Bible is... The only book in the world that the author sits next to you while you read it 24-7. I love it that you're with us. And Father, I pray for everyone listening now that you would fill them with your love. Come, Lord, just fill them. More of you, Father. More of you. Fill them with your peace. Fill them with your love. Lord, don't let any person have a bad night's sleep. Don't let any person fret. I speak against frets in Jesus' name. Any fretting, I speak against any spirit of anxiety or fear. I pray the love of the Lord Jesus over you. I love you, church. I'm praying for you. And may God have mercy on you and all of us. And keep loving God. Keep loving your neighbour. Don't give in to fear. Amen. One thing I really wanted to do was to encourage various members of the church to interact with this service. And... You know, if you're willing to do a reading or uh, um, prayers, do let me know. We'd love that. So I've invited Amanda to take us and lead us in our prayers now. Good morning, everyone. I'm bringing you these prayers from my home this morning. And we may be physically apart today, but we are united in our faith and by the words of Scripture. And perhaps... Nothing does this better than the words of the Lord's Prayer. So I thought we'd start by joining together in prayer as our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And in the remainder of our prayers this morning, I have borrowed from a prayer for deliverance from the coronavirus, which was written by Pete Gregg of the 24-7 prayer movement. At the end of each section, When I say God of love and mercy, do please join wherever you are with hear our prayer. Prayer is so important just now. It is one crucial way our church remains open and fully functioning. It is our greatest weapon. So let's pray. John 16 verse 33 says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. We are indeed in a state of tribulation, but you, Lord, have overcome sin and death and the world. So may we indeed take heart and know that you hold this situation in your hands. May we clothe ourselves with faith, not fear, 
in our current tribulation. You, Lord, are powerful and merciful, and we pray that you might deliver us quickly from this pandemic and its fallout and all the other consequences. For we are in desperate need and we cry out to you to help us. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. We think of those who are sick with the virus, those who are otherwise unwell or elderly and so especially vulnerable. We think of, of parents expecting a baby and concerned about bringing a newborn into this situation. We remember those who are afraid because they or loved ones are especially at risk. Lord, we pray your healing for the sick and that those who are scared might take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the situation has passed. We think of those self-isolating, especially if they live alone. May they know that you are with them in their isolation. May they know your peace in their turmoil and bear the situation with patience. And in spite of the new restrictions, may neighbours and friends be alerted to any who are in need, as there are still ways to help. We think of those who are separated by distance from family members that they may be concerned about and unable, unable to visit. We pray for anyone who is grieving and reeling from the unexpected loss of a loved one from this virus. May they find your comfort in their loss and your hope in their despair. So let's just spend a moment now bringing to the Lord those we know who are grieving, sick, vulnerable or in isolation. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for medical and other related professionals and carers dealing daily with the intense pressures of the crisis and putting themselves at risk of disease. We give such great thanks for them and their care and dedication. Lord, grant that they remain healthy and give them resilience and overflowing compassion at this time, especially as they may see some tough scenes and need to make some tough decisions as the situation unfolds. Grant too that the equipment and protective clothing they so desperately need might be forthcoming. We thank you too for the army of researchers working steadily towards the vaccine. Give them clarity and wisdom and may they have those breakthroughs we all so desperately yearn for to deliver us. We give thanks and pray for safety for all our emergency services and other key workers keeping our energy and water and food supplies going, emptying our bins and so on. We give thanks for teachers manning the schools to look after the children of key workers. We think of our police who may be having some difficult conversations with the public and making tough decisions in the coming weeks. We pray for calm and good sense to prevail in those situations. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders, for national governments, the World Health Organization and local leaders too, for heads of hospitals, care homes and schools, all trying to manage an unprecedented situation. Lord, you have put these people in these positions at this hour. Give them your wisdom above and beyond their own and your strength above and beyond their own strength so that they will know the right course to take to manage the situation, to minimise fear and panic and keep vital institutions and services going. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. And let's spend a moment now thinking of the wider world. Lord, we bring to you all those places where there is no proper medical provision. We know that our health service is going to struggle but some parts of the world have no access to proper medical care and will suffer so much more from this. And we remember those places where the virus is just another difficulty in the daily struggle for existence, where people live in poverty and have no food or employment or are in places afflicted by war. We pray for your mercy and compassion to be at work in these places we pray that aid charities on which they depend will be able to continue working with them. God of love and mercy, 
hear our prayer. And returning now to our community, we pray for all those facing economic hardship and the loss of jobs or businesses over the coming weeks as they are required to close or to deal with many sick employees. Sometimes these businesses have been a life's work and the, and the prospect of their loss is tremendous. The implications are so much wider than health. We lift to you now anyone we know who is concerned for their livelihood. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for families now at home together, trying to find a way to manage homeworking and homeschooling and just being together 24 seven. We pray for peace, patience and tolerance. We pray that people will abide by the government guidance in order to give our health system the best chance of coping with the situation and saving lives. We pray that the fear that leads to the panic buying we have seen will subside and that it will be replaced by good sense, by loving our neighbour as you directed and by a spirit of community, everyone working together. If we all just take what we need, there will be enough for all. Indeed, give us faith that if, in fact, we give generously to any brother and sister in need, you will supply all our needs. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. And let's end on a positive, as there are so many rays of light in this darkness. We know that God works for the good in every seemingly miserable and hopeless situation. And we give thanks for all the amazing acts and signs of love and neighbourliness that we see around us, with so many postcard, phone calls, shopping schemes, new food banks, thousands of people signing up to the NHS volunteer scheme, amazing people so willing to help others, whether known to them or not. And we pray too that in all of this, Lord, more people might seek to turn to you for comfort, for support in their fear and trouble. That as people at home have more time to reflect and take stock on the busy and frantic lives they may have been leading, or have time even just to survey your amazing creation around them, this might lead to a growth in your kingdom here on earth. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. We pray for deliverance. And let's end by sharing the grace with one another. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We now come to our communion part of the service as directed by the church. I will be taking communion uh, in a sense on behalf of all of us. So let's prepare our hearts now as we come to take communion. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. And he opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and he gave you thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. We say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So friends, draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. So as I take this now, I remember those within our church who are scared. I remember those in our church who are worried. And as I say this final set of words, I just want us to prepare our hearts as we recognize together. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Christ I take not just for myself, but for the church. And the blood of Christ shed for the forgiveness of sins. Father, I pray, would you send your Holy Spirit now to those listening and comfort them. I do plan to do more ministry in my sermon, Lord, but just now, just touch them. Fill them with your love and your peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. In my words that we say together after communion, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. If you would like the words for communion to join in with me, I'm going to put them on the phone app and I will have them available on uh, Facebook, on the Facebook page if you want to use them. And also they will be available, uh, you can download them from the Church of England's page or we can email them to you. So let us know which is best for you. I really 
Thanks for joining us at our service and I'd like to pray a prayer, prayer blessing on you. May God bless you with a happy, healthy heart full of hope. May God bless you with hope for the future and faith in God that never fails. May God bless you in your home and your family and in all that you care about and hold dear. And may God bless and protect your children in all that we face in this time. And the blessing of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love now and always. Amen.